You want to do a greeting? All right. Oh, Josh is coming in. Sorry, we're getting off to a little bit of a slow start. Josh is here. Hello, hello. He can't hear us yet, but he's coming. And it looks Pause. like we are live. So what is going on, everybody? This is Chris from the Base Channel, and this is our fourth or fifth live stream. And today we are joined all the way from Texas, which, funny enough, was where all my exes live. Uh, Patrick Hunter joins us. Oh, <laughs> boys. <laughs> We've got uh, Nick, Will, and Josh from California, and myself, of course, from beautiful Nevada or Nevada. Nevada. And I'm actually out in the COVID cockpit right now i'm not, I'm not a ventura <laughs> i'm out yeah. fighting the disease so, so like everybody as you're lizards. coming in uh if you when you're coming in just let us know where you're from uh we got jacoby here uh definitely blowing up the chat what is going on friend <laughs> <laughs> will is in space yes the base gang all right so we are here so how is everybody doing i'm doing well doing good man <laughs> it's been an interesting day but it's good Patrick's got some big news. There it is. Yeah, I bought a car. I've never bought a car that's not just a cash car before. So that's interesting. I guess I'm an adult now at 27. When you say cash car, you mean like a secondhand <laughs> car from someone else kind of thing? Yeah, or third hand or fourth hand. You know, I've been <laughs> rocking a 2000 Honda Civic hatchback for five years now that I got for two grand. And it's been doing me fucking awesome. Will, I mean, what about your awesome. car? Oh, what? <laughs> um... Yeah, it turns on. It gets me sometimes from point A to point B. <laughs> sometimes the door will close. It's, let's talk about fun stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Coming in here, we've got a few people. We've got uh, Ecuador, Ventura. Hey, someone from Ventura. Cool. Ventura, Columbus, right. Ohio. New Zealand and Oregon are all joined with us. So that's cool. What is going on, everybody? If you can't tell, we've got Patrick over there. I don't know how I'm oriented sometimes, so it's a little tough to point. <laughs> Everybody's here. <laughs> so uh, how shall we kick this off? Anybody have any suggestions, Nicholas? Well, P Mr. Patrick, dude, I, I got to say, man, like I miss your face. I miss Aww. you. Honestly, I, I, like, you I haven't seen you since Nam, dude. And uh, yeah. and I'm really stoked to finally actually get to get to see you and chat with you again, man. How yeah. how have you been? How are things treating you, man? Uh, you know, just staying essential and everything. And um, <laughs> like, I'm very fortunate to have a job and uh not have covid but i'm on my second quarantine right now because of other people and it just happens i guess but i'm healthy my girlfriend's healthy my dogs are healthy so it's, it is what it is i miss you guys Good. very much i miss you too um, dude i'm bummed that we're not gonna hang this summer in germany dude i was just thinking that uh, like, it's like heart. any idea of tgu for this year was done is yeah and it's just <laughs> 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 okay real quick we have uh seven questions that are all the same question from brett cooper says is a new ernie ball stingray special worth the price now patrick would probably be the best to answer that since he just got two of them well what is like i think he, he means a music man though like an actual music man ernie ball stingray special Sting. ernie ball <laughs> stingray special oh, my dog just red. got let out too we uh yeah, we looked at those <laughs> We looked at those at TGU, right? We did that whole state. Well, you guys oh, did the three yeah. of you. We I didn't get. I didn't get a chance to play those. Um, well, how much is the Stingray special? Isn't it kind of in, in like that twelve to six? No, sixteen is like the the or is the new one or the American one two thousand? I don't remember. You got a price for us? The I have the internet in my hand. Let's take a look here. The special oh, was fancy. the roasted maple, right? Because that thing sounded killer. Man, I don't remember. There's so many of them. says, yeah, mm -hmm. dude says a real music man. So I'm going to guess that is somewhere in the Definitely. $16 to $1,800 range. Yeah. I mean, they're wicked. Yeah, they're I'm going to go. Yeah, they sound great. It From what I saw in the video, it looks like you guys really dug them. Again, I wasn't in there. I was sitting outside waiting for you guys to finish. He said it's about $2,100. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. About $2,100. bucks. These probably have the roasted maple neck and all that. Um, I mean, dude, rule of thumb, like, gotta play it. You gotta figure out if it works well for you, you know? Um, 
but uh but i thought it was pretty cool we were actually just talking about the roasted maple necks and stuff just before we started uh just in casual chat and like i have an american stingray dude and i, I absolutely love it so getting i don't know about like the special versus some of the other series but i'm thumbs up for most of the uh the ernie ball legit stingray stuff especially with the roast maple neck it's it's it feels good it's nice I'm under the thought that if, you know, if you're going to get a 2000 or $2,100 base, the question of, is it worth it is going to most likely always be a yes. I think the bigger question is, is it going to work for me? Cause I mean, I mean, unless you get a lemon or a factory defect, usually stuff in that price range is pretty killer. Yeah. I mean, it's a stingray too. If you like stingrays are so distinct in that sound. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh yeah, that's a stingray, and I don't know. Dropping two grand on a base for me, I'm super stingy. Like majority, if not all, the bases I own, except for the <laughs> Dingwall and the Ripper, are all under a grand, if not under seven hundred dollars. I think. I think same and, actually. And I want to show you my walls. <laughs> hey, that's fine, man. <laughs> like it's one of those things where it's just like, dude, if you got the money and like hell yeah for the most part like you just saying like if it's twenty one hundred dollars there's no doubt it's definitely worth it and like but music man's like if you don't like the sounds of music man and you're like well maybe if i get the expensive one it'll change that no 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 it, it's a music man good point it's gonna have that distinct growl to it but it's gonna be built well so if oh, dude, you know if that's so what you're sick. asking then yeah also my my wife is in here she says oh hey, hey probably hey, up, hey, up. upstairs <laughs> or in the living room i don't know <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got fret buzz at all have an american professional p base that has some fret buzz out of the box that's something that you can tweak yeah, and set up out of it up and you'll have a killer p base uh patrick the show me what you base video was great love the connection <laughs> to the fans and the commentary on everyone's base no matter what unique or old or whatever Dude, thanks man uh yeah, i appreciate get, like, that you got like over a thousand emails like the first <laughs> <laughs> hold up okay <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> so um i think i had like two or three viewers over maybe like a, a few month period and they had this idea where they basically said what if you do like a user submitted one that's similar to your ugly base video series but you just like not, i guess not commentate on it but just like put your just put your thoughts out on it and it's like that's a really cool idea because you can share people's like number one bases with the entire like world like not saying that like, yeah, I have all these viewers or anything like that, but it's just like, you know, you have all these viewers from all across the world. And if they have that one instrument, that means the world to them. Like this right here, like this is literally going to the fucking grave with me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just a $500 made in Mexico jazz bass with some extra pickups on it and a badass what two bridge. But it's just like, man, I, I, I love it. And Within the first 24, not even the first 24 hours, in the first two hours of my initial announcement video of it being up, I had 100 emails. And I was like, shit, I was expecting like 100 emails when I got home from work. Then when I got home from work, it was 309. And wow. I was like, fuck! <laughs> <laughs> Just we, got a, we got we a quick uh, constructive oh. criticism. Somebody's nose is whistling into the microphone. Is it mine? I don't know. <laughs> is it mine i don't know but uh yeah man it was, there's i'm getting emails i just see the little email like pop up multiple times a day now too and it's just like i don't i'm gonna try and just like pop these out as best as i can sort of thing and feature as many bases as possible but it's funny because chris you had you texted me and you're like dude there's gonna be so many p bases <laughs> yeah i was because i was asking like dude should i even send you my thunderbird at this point or is it just gonna get lost in the shuffle you know i'm i'm trying to be really diligent and it's like not first come first serve but do it in order not giving anyone like priority or anything like that so that's cool yeah just working through as much as i can though <laughs> That's a really cool idea, man. I got to tip my hat to you. I love that idea. Cause like, I'm totally the kind of guy who'll have like 30 tabs open of all these aces and like, well, this one and this one are the same wood, but what's different about that? I like to just, Oh dude, totally cool idea, man. I totally dig it. And one of them was a 15 year old in Italy and him and his dad 3d printed a base. 
and he was like he like in the email said like i hope to get this down and do it much better the second time and it's like dude you're 15 years that's old awesome like, what the hell that's sick that's we got dave dixon in the chat with us dave we he and i had talked about maybe potentially 3d printing a base and i still want to see if we can make that happen because that would be dude. it would be really fun because i think it would crush the tone wood doesn't matter argument oh yeah you know because i mean <laughs> have you seen the video where the guy made a base out of legos and it sounds like shit <laughs> <laughs> but what pickups did he though. have in it that's the it, question it was like a, yeah. it was like a piece setup i don't know the exact pickups he had in it but like dude it sounded like legos i don't know how probably, else to put it like probably it Bartolini's. Sounded like legos, <laughs> like, oh. legos. <laughs> like i know that sounds stupid but when you hear it you're like oh that's totally like something is weird about this so, sounds like, like a bunch of bricks <laughs> yeah exactly all right we got another question here hello from korea I have two Korean PRS SE bases, a Kingfisher and a Kestrel. Mm. I'm surprised they're not more widely appreciated. What are your thoughts? They're incredible, dude. Both of them. Yeah, it's <laughs> – I mean, in my opinion, that I've, I haven't tried the Kingfisher, but the Kestrel was a souped-up jazz base. Yep. It's bitching. I, I love it. I think we used the Kingfisher when we got the shots of us at the lake at the last at TGU. TGU. No, no, that no. Was, no. That, that was, was the, the Granger. Granger. Yeah. Oh, okay, oh. okay. Yeah, I got okay. I got big thoughts on those, dude. I love those bases, man. I'm a huge fan. And like, so I was the manager of a music store, as you guys all pretty much know at this point. And like, I had a long chat about uh, with my PRS rep at the time, dude. And like, I wish PRS would market them more. They're so well known as a guitar company where they make excellent electric guitars and they've kind of like branched <sighs> off in like the acoustic world and they're getting more and more well known for acoustics. But like their bases, I think, are still really underrepresented because they're really good pieces. For the longest time, they were made in like uh, the Wildwood factory in, uh, I think, Seoul, South Korea, uh, which is basically like the Samic factory. It was like the, the um, their factory was just like how Samic guitars was churning out thousands of different guitars every day um and it was a similar situation but like the qc was so good on those se series at a really good price point so dude i'm a huge fan man i just wish prs would like market them more you know and give more attention to the line because i think we could see some cool pieces josh you played the kestrel what what, uh, what were your opinions on it can you still hear me yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. all right cool loud and clear um, josh <laughs> Uh, no, I liked it a lot. I mean, the only thing I think I would do is change out the pickups if I had to. If I had to, what did it you played what, really well? What did you dislike about the pickups? Um, well, you know what? Maybe it was the E string. Maybe it was the pop. Was I getting a pop when I was playing it last time? Yeah, because I, I the tend to hit down right. Yeah, it was either the strings were too low or the pickups were too high. But your attack was definitely hitting the pickups. Yeah, I think that might have been it then. Well, maybe I don't have to do the pickups then. Maybe maybe it's you just need me. a setup. Yeah. Okay, well, I don't. What uh, what big names are on PRS for bases? I don't Do think anybody know? like Nick was saying they're not really doing a hell of a job marketing it. Well, well, Gary Granger has his signature PRS five string. Uh, it's an American made. Um, I can't really think of of anybody else in the baseline though. Off the top yeah. of my head, PRS has obviously Santana. They have uh, John Mayer. Uh, they have. Uh, 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 oh yeah, John Mayer's PRS Stratocaster. I remember that. Right. Which yeah, I've heard, the Silver like, Sky. Great things about though. Like I've heard that it's just incredible compared to like a Fender Strat. It's it looks dope. Great. Yeah. It's it's a dope guitar. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, they have an excellent electric guitar lineup. I don't know. Aside from Gary Granger, off the top of my head, it would just be cool if they, you know, like I said, gave a little more attention to the line. Yeah, this, this they're good. incredible. You're right. They're great. I've when we had the Kestrel, I never wanted to give that thing back. That thing was great. And all the tones we have with the Kestrel of like Jamie playing it, just everything was so killer. It's such a, a rounded out version of like the Fender jazz bass tone. It, it was really cool. All right. We got a couple more. I'm going to burn through a couple more comments. Uh, Ainsley Agro, AKA Brandon Jackson says, hello there. Hey, Brandon. What's hello. up, man? Um, hello. Chris, question from Chris Chilton. Any of you guys have compression on at all times when you're gigging? Uh, yeah, me for the most part. I used to see more Duncan studio bass. And I play in a band with two guitar players, so I just like to keep that compression on just to keep that low end as tight as possible throughout the show. Because I, I have a couple moments where I like am in the forefront, but for the most part, I'm just holding it down as we're pretty much supposed to do as bassist. So uh, I love compressor. Nick, though, I remember when we were talking about compressors a lot, he told me that he turns it on and off based on the needs. So I'm kind of interested to hear his uh, my My opinion is it kind of changed a little bit. I actually leave my compressor on all the time as well now. Um, and I also use the uh, Seymour Duncan Studio Bass Compressor. My buddy Ruben turned me on to it. Um, 
really cool. And I actually put it at the end of my signal chain because I have all these like different effects with different volume levels. And it tends to work at the end of the signal chain um, just to kind of like flatten things out a little bit. But I love a little bit of compression when I, especially when I geek live. What about you, Patrick? What about you, Bang? Man, it's funny because compression, I didn't really ever pay attention to compression until probably about a year and a half ago. Because I was just like, oh yeah, compression, it's that thing <laughs> it's that pedal that does nothing i'm not a smart yeah. guy i'm not gonna lie it's just one of those things that i just never really paid attention to or it's like i never needed it but then when i actually learned how to properly use it it's just like oh shit so i can go from that low e go straight up like the highest note on my g string and they like the same level the same tone and it's just like i get it now uh sometimes on some of my demos and stuff i'll use them um but dude, it's one of those things that it has its time and place. And a lot of times it's just perfect. It's one of those things that can really help your tone all around, no matter what like rig you're using either. And it's just badass. Josh? Um, I use it all the time now because the Alpha Omega has it built in. So yeah. <laughs> I pretty much put it at about 10 o'clock. It all depends like where I'm at in the room and so forth. Cause you know, I don't know, it's just a different different outlets and different sounds and where I'm standing on stage can really make a difference on the uh, compression. So uh, at least for my ear, for my own ear. So, um, but the first time I used compression was, uh, if you guys ever heard of Demeter, right? Demeter application. I have, no? I've heard of them. I haven't used any of their products though. I had a compressor given to me cause the guy said, you need a compressor. And I'm like, does that mean I suck, dude, or what? What does that mean? <laughs> and he's like, no, man. Yeah, and I was in a death metal band, so I didn't really know what to do with it. So it's just one knob, and that was it. Connected it, and I was like, I don't, I don't hear a difference. I really don't hear. Again, that was death metal, blazing speed. I'm playing really fast, so probably didn't do anything uh, for me. But um, it wasn't until I started playing more, you know hard rock rock more uh, simplified bass lines where you can actually hear the compression which makes more sense so i don't was know this, it all depends was this death metal band that you just referenced is that when weren't you with like beers like josh wasn't he in I that was. band what was yeah. the name of that band again i don't remember uh menticide yeah there you there's go. a video <laughs> there's a video of them playing in simi valley and it's fucking nuts dude it is yeah. so cool and josh's hair is like super duper long can't even see his face oh i'll pull it up hold on I need oh this. no nice. yes. that's the yeah. shirt i want hold on. i'm gonna pull it up <laughs> that was when i had a 400 plus a mesa boogie 400 plus God, and a damn. 410 yeah. 115 cab road ready oh. i was so stoked oh hell $4, yeah dude. half stack i had to sell it <laughs> that sucks, that's, dude. That's uh, that so hurts. much power. It was great, but you know what? A thing weighed 150 pounds, just the cabinet. <laughs> just the so, cab, dude. Yeah, that's it? 150 pounds. Yeah, Lift that with one eight. hand. That's nothing. I guarantee you, I'm not on the cabinet heavier than that, Nicholas. <laughs> no, dude. I can't even do it with my 410 at like 90 pounds. It sucks. <laughs> All right. I, I pulled up the video if y'all want to take a quick peek at it. Oh, my God. Give me it. Give me it so now. So let me. So this is my first time doing any kind of screen sharing. Just let me know. Can you guys see my desktop screen? Yes. You got a person. Okay. Week. Josh, any particular song? Oh. Probably Feast. All right. Here we go. Here we Based go. on zombies. Is that volume okay for everybody? Yeah, I think that's probably Thank you guys. Oh, you're welcome. That's me right in the middle with the uh, number of the B shirt. <laughs> you want to give us a full screen? There you go. Can we get a little here, please? All right, cool. We're all good? Everyone can see? Yep. All right. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I love this. All right, this next song <laughs> is called Feast. <laughs> oh, yeah, the hair flip, though. Oh, 
So there it is. If, you, if anyone wants to check it out, yeah. look at the hair. That's so dope. <laughs> That's just, dude. just search Menticide Simi Valley. You can see right there. You guys can check out a few more of them. So that is that. Oh, that's my four plus. plus. Oh, yeah. Oh, behind the guitar player to the right. And the uh, Tom Araya bass. All right, I'm going to stop yeah. screen sharing. There we go. That's cool. so sick, dude. That's so cool. Uh, we had one more question here for Patrick from Dave Dixon. He says, speaking of 3D printing, uh, I know the TBC guys like stuff, but Patrick, did you ever try the bullseye buttons I gave you at NAM last year? Just curious. Design has evolved a little since then. Yeah, dude. So I actually put them on my board for a bit. And it's one of those things where uh, I just saw this bright orange thing. Anytime I would turn my head and it's like, oh, hell yeah. And it just makes you want to step on it like just like instantly. Dude, they're so sick too. And it's cool because they fit so snugly on the actual uh, fucking stomp itself. I can't think of the name. Yeah, if anyone is curious what we're talking about, it's these the whatever these buttons here. Dave yeah. Dixon oh, from DDX Brandon. Design makes them. We, we have some custom ones here. But they fit right on, right on the switch, and it's a little bit more surface area for your foot. So, uh, yeah, check out ddxdesign.com if you want to check some out. We have a bunch. And, Somebody uh, in the chat, oh, in the chat just said Josh looking like Glenn Fricker. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Oh man! Callie we do have Glenn. another. Uh, let me see one more question here. Uh, okay, I, I've been noticing this real quick in the comments when people say bass player here, they capitalize bass like all caps. And I'm not, it's been like, a, it's a new phenomenon that I've only noticed in the last like Bruce. week. So bass finally player deserve. here. That's Neely, bro. Uh, dude wants to know <laughs> yeah. uh, good instruments at entry level prices. Samic artists as well. I don't know about Samic, but Patrick, you have a video on bases for under 250, right? Under, yeah, it's 250 <laughs> and I have one under 500 too. I would say, man, it depends on what you're really looking at. I'm looking around my room right now. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, dude. Harley Benton, badass. Yes. Slurge a little more. Sterling by Music Man. They're cheap. Made in Indonesia, I believe. Yeah, Indonesia. This is the short scale. It's like 30 inch. God, it's so fun. Squire's got good stuff too. Squire is killer stuff. Especially dude, the, the, Squire, the vintage modified. The vintage modified and the classic vibe series. Yes. Is, yes. Oh, so classic cool. vibes rad. Man. People Josh, you just... some of those are better than Fenders. Uh, yeah, like straight up. Yeah, the Classic Vibe series is next level. I love that stuff. Josh, you just got a Harley Benton, right? Yeah, I got the PJH five string. It was one hundred and eighteen dollars, and with it was shipping, it was like fifty bucks. So you're still under two hundred bucks, and it's super nice. You want to see it? No, I remember. Yeah, yeah pull it up. Pull it up. Pull yeah, it up. boy. <laughs> I remember you brought it to the studio, go get it. Though, dude. That thing is so cool. Dude, he literally wall. texted us. He literally texted us. He's like, guess what? His picture of it was like, yeah. <laughs> While he's getting that, uh, someone says, Patrick, do you gig? Is there a band we should check out that you're in? So uh, we don't gig right now, but uh, my band is Pseudo Future. P-S-E-U-D-O Future. Uh, Pseudo yeah, Future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. Okay, there it is. It's, uh, it's dark red. It's hard to tell on the light. but it is. I've seen it. It is a really nice red. Yeah. Um, the only thing that's kind of tough if you want to change the pickups is this configuration right there. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah it extends to the G, which is a little different. It's because it's a five string, right? It's a five yeah, string but yeah. typically yeah. five string P pickups, they extend to the B. Mm. So the, the left side or the you know base side is longer, which hmm. I don't know why they did that design that way. But, but it plays uh, well and it sounds pretty good the way it is kind of I like mean, the um what was the one that you just did um patrick the uh like the thunderbird oh the thunderbird one that uh, thing feels TV great 70 yeah oh yeah 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 that thing is bitching yeah oh, that yeah, thing's badass cool. we did uh we only did one cover nice. with that right cowboys from hell yeah i think yeah, that was the only great. one it sounds good too Oh, speaking of covers, can I make a, a statement real quick? Yeah. Okay. Fucking fuck you, Josh. I'm <laughs> sick of you. I am so done with watching videos oh, of you, mainly this, like your right hand, and you're just like, oh, my God. oh yeah, what's up? Holy shit. Dude, 
fuck. <laughs> I just want to be good at bass like once in my life. But every time I swear to Christ, I see Josh play. And what sucks too is I can't be mad because every time, like, especially when I get to see you, it's just like, Josh, and you're like, dude, what's up? <laughs> He's nice. What's too. happening, man? <laughs> fuck you, Josh. Fuck you. And you walk away. Well, hey. That's the What's real up, like base channel shirt that I need. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're, we're thinking about making a, a Thunderfinger shirt. I don't know how that's gonna look yet, but maybe just like that peace sign, but little lightning bolts is dude. <laughs> or that'd be so wicked. <laughs> I mean, I'm loving covers, this one, dude. That is that's so badass. bitching. I that is so cool. Oh, I got you one. I'm gonna bring it next week. Oh well, thank you. I got yeah, a blanket. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I saw that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, okay, so speaking of the covers, uh, we got one other question. Josh, I can't stop watching your full album playthrough of Master of Puppets. Do you plan on attacking another album? If so, what do you have in mind? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to let We're you thinking. answer that one because I know the answer. Ride the Lightning. And yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ride the Lightning and then uh, probably Rain and Blood. That's gonna so. be so That's crazy. I think Rain and Blood. Yeah. And we were kicking around Power Slave, and then at some point, Death Magnetic. Damn, dude, Death Magnetic would be so badass. Well, I have all of the isolated Guitar Hero tracks, so I can fully remix it. Oh yeah, hell yeah! Yeah. Dude. yeah, which that's that's been my number one issue. Is I just I hate how dry that mix is because the mm -hmm. songs are killer, but it's just it doesn't sound good. And probably Blood Mountain from Mastodon. My man. I'm just kidding. Oh, I'm just kidding. I just want to see oh, Patrick's face. Oh, oh yeah. dude. <laughs> I love Mastodon. Oh, you dude. have to. No, we have to now. Yeah, that'd be great. I love that album. So, do you guys like the new record, The uh, Emperor of Sand? Yes, it's good. I love it. Right? Oh, what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you guys prefer like the newer kind of Mastodon sound? The uh, what is it? Once more around the sun, Emperor of Sand, or like. Um, Old sludgy blood Old, mountain, like sea beast and I am Ahab, yeah. everything from like Leviathan and back then. Where where back do you guys camp? Dude. Yes, I'm somewhere uh, between like I really like the evolution from Leviathan to like Once More Around the Sun. That whole chunk of time, the hunter it's and everything just, like yeah, that. Yeah, dude, I love that stuff. I think that's what I was introduced to. So I think that's where like nostalgically it's it'll always be kind of that era. Uh -huh. it's My first album that I really like actually got into Mastodon was Crack the Sky. And wow. like ever since then, like going back to their older stuff, especially Brent's like yeah, 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 singing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> What's wrong with this guy? <laughs> but they're new. I'm much more a bigger fan of their newer stuff, man. And I just feel like it's that like they've grown into something so much more cohesive in terms of songwriting. Yeah. And um like I'm trying, I'm not gonna be an asshole, but when I got to meet them last year, uh, when Coheed came through, and Coheed and Mastodon were doing their co-headlining tour, and I got to just sit down with Troy Humble for flex. a bit. And it, yeah, I'm trying not to, but like I told Troy that he goes, "Thanks, man. Like we're actually having like this is the most fun we've ever had as a band, and it's just one of those things where we just feel more as a family between ourselves, even though we have our own family back home and everything." And I was like, cool. "Dude, that's so cool." Yeah, yeah that's, that's rad. Sick. Seems like a really chill dude. The first time I seen him live and her even heard him was in 2005 when they uh, played at uh, OzFest. And that was the first time I ever heard him. Oh, man, about shit my pants, dude. And they, were, <laughs> they were like actually signing signing the album. And I was like, oh, dude. So I went and bought the album. I didn't get it signed, though. But that was the first time. And after that, I was like, all right. I stopped listening to him after um, Crack the Sky, though. You gotta, I don't know you, why. you gotta hear at least the new album. The new album is amazing. Yeah. I do. I did. I went back this last couple of years and started re-listening to all the stuff, and then that's when it blew my mind. It takes a while, honestly, if you stop listening from Leviathan and Crack the Sky, though, for me, because I think it's way more produced. It's it sounds good. I love it. Yeah. Totally different it's records. Way produced, yeah. but it's so good. You know, I can't get enough of it. So, all the tones and everything. So. Dude, they they are legit one of my all time favorite bands. I love Misa Mastodon, man. And it happened really quickly. Like I kind of like, 
I got very interested in Mastodon uh, from the the Crack the Sky album. Same thing as Patrick, but like I lived in the Hunter. It was like we had like yeah. five or six CDs we used to play at work all the time. One of which was Dude. the Hunter. So I listened to the Hunter over and over and yes. over again. And like people talk trash about that record for some reason. I think it's awesome. I really, really like it. Um, but uh, dude, there's, I, I have to say, like, I do prefer like the later half of Mastodon a little bit more when it gets a little bit more produced. But like every once in a while, dude, I gotta, I think the, the first record I ever heard actually was uh, shortly after Leviathan came out. It might have been when Leviathan just came out back when I was in college. Um, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm it, sorry dude. to interrupt, but we are getting a lot of questions here. I kind of want to bust through a couple of them. Let's do it. Uh, but around. before we do that, there, <laughs> in regards to my capitalizing base, somebody says I capitalize base, so I feel like I'm punching through the mix. Oh. <laughs> uh. I, I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> funny. Okay, uh, we have quite a bit. Here's a quick one. How long do the Harley Benton bases usually take to ship from overseas? What have your experiences been? Um, Nick's doesn't they, count because we had an issue. I, I think, think this took less than two weeks. What? Yeah, it wasn't very long. <laughs> when did you get it? Like, when was it? Like, what month? Um, Last month. Oh, shit. That's actually really quick. I just, I mean, I mean, I work in logistics, so I just know everything right now is beyond stretched thin, especially international-wise. And um, I'm part of a Harley Benton, like, Facebook group. And every day you just see someone new post, like, I, I I bought this two weeks ago, but it's not here yet. And it's of like, dude, it's coming from Germany and you live in right. Nebraska. Like, yeah. give it a second. Oh, oh we lost William. So yeah, no, I have a similar situation. Fortunately, I like I can work from home right now, which is good. So I'm still working a lot. And I got a similar situation where I'm dealing with like shipping all the time. People are always like, hey, when's my thing going to oh, ship? And what's the deal with this, that, and the other thing? I'm like, dude, if you can get it in two weeks, you're lucky. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's for domestic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> International, yeah. gotta be patient. Yeah. Usually, I think it takes around a month if you live in the states, at least. Yeah. But right now, uh, I mean, it's up in the air. Even UPS is not guaranteeing uh, even like ground uh, time mm -hmm. estimates. They can't even guarantee ground. You know. Uh, we got oh, another got one here. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did. I got lucky. Uh, we got another one. Uh, basically, torn between Electro Harmonics Battalion and Sans Amp VT Base DI. Any thoughts from the Peanut Gallery? VT Base DI. Anybody else? <laughs> yeah, I think I agree. Yeah. I do. Electro Harmonics is cool. Electro Harmonics is sick, but like, they like the VT Base and Sans Amp. They like focus their energy on bass players and bass. You know what I mean? And that really does make a difference at the end of the day. You can hear that it's more bass centric. Even though EHX does have cool bass stuff, you can tell they're kind of switching lanes with that versus Sans Amp. Yeah. Anyone else? I think that covers it. I mean, all right, I, I got one that we can all answer. Fave, top two overdrive pedals, and what do you do to keep the low end? Suppress? No, not no suppressor. The other one. The favorite, line favorite. Yeah, the line selector is one, but. Uh, I think if, if we're if you're doing bass overdrive, it's not going to be an issue. So that's true. It just depends. Uh, but what are your guys's favorite uh, overdrive pedals? Looking for mine, I don't know. I don't think it's out right now. <laughs> Fuzzrocious uh, Gray Stash. Oh. Um, I've never tried anything by Fuzzrocious. I want dude, to do it, man. Ryan's a fucking killer, dude. He, shit, he made that uh, stupid signature pedal. <laughs> <laughs> <Patrick awesome>. pedal. <laughs> yeah, that was rad. I love that. This I, I literally went up to Ryan at so NAM and I was like, can I was like, I have an idea for an April Fool's joke. We make a signature pedal. It's gonna be really dumb. Just have it be an input and output and LEDs. <laughs> and I just like went on this like five minute tangent and be like, please, we can do this. <laughs> cool yeah. That was so goes, good. And then he just he just goes, Yeah, man. Uh what color do you want it? <laughs> <laughs> But the Fuzz Rocious Gray Stash for me. And if it has a blend knob, you're good to go. Yeah, definitely. Nick, go. favorite, um, top two uh, favorites? Um, I don't know about two. I always tend to go to like the, uh, I really like the MXR base, uh, uh, base overdrive, the silver one. I broke mine, which sucks. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of wrecked it. Um, since then, I've kind of been like using my X7, but that's more of a distortion or my swollen pickle, which is way more of a fuzz. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I have to admit, I don't know if I have like totally a favorite overdrive yet. I have yet to find one that's like totally like blowing my skirt up, man. Uh, the MXR one was good because it was like 
cheap, you know, it was a good price and it sounded good, but I broke it. So I gotta, I gotta think of something new. I'd probably have to go for the B3K and Classic. the, I'll, I'll throw a guitar one in there. Um, probably the green rhino. Oh, and you can, oh, yeah, you can keep the, the low end with the hundred Hertz knob, or you can do the line selector in a clean blend with an EQ or, or whatever you want to do. But I'd say those two are good to go for me. I forgot about the green rhino. I actually use that on oh, bass yeah. a lot. That one thing, that thing sounds, rad. it sounds really good on bass. Yeah. I got a little bit of a left fielder that I don't, we never even actually owned. I just remember like using it. And then my taste today has kind of evolved into that sound. And it's the Aguilar, the aggro. Oh yeah, dude. That thing oh. was sick, dude. That thing I've was never used it sick. before. It sounds so good. And at the time I was like, I was in my flurry of dark glass. Like that was just the shit, which it still is, but I've, I've kind of, you know, set the seeds on that. But, um, Dude, it's like a real, real tight because it's modeled after the drive on the AG800 or something. One of the older amps they don't make anymore. They just modeled it after that drive section, and it sounds fucking killer. It does sound really good. So I think that's going to be mine. I definitely don't have two for you. Sorry. Josh? <laughs> I think I know what Josh's answer is. but Well, definitely Alpha Omega is one of them. Hell yeah. <laughs> um... <sighs> I want to say the uh, – I can't remember the actual model name, but the Boss is the yellow one, the Overdrive. Oh, the ODB3? Or OD. Yeah. Yeah, that one. Yeah. Uh, OBD3 or the SD1? No, I think ODB3. Oh, I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 Also, I just realized I'm dumb. The gray stash is a fuzz pedal. So that was useless of me. <laughs> but it was a good plug, though. It was a good plug. I dig well, it. There's also the Crazy Tube Circuits one. I'm trying to think of it right now. Well, while Crazy you're tube. thinking of it, quick question for Patrick Do you prefer flats or rounds when it comes to strings? Oh, dude. Uh, rounds yeah. i have one bass that has flats on it and it's like my p bass now and this is my first like flats like true flats experience like it but I, it's like flats on a p that's like what you're supposed to do right that's kind of the thing yeah <laughs> bro with the gold anodized pick guard yeah, dude yeah i actually cut guard, the dude. shit out of my finger when i was putting it on and i was like <laughs> it's real metal <laughs> oh, dude so sick uh quick question for josh Josh, what's your secret behind your right hand technique? I have trouble keeping up with higher tempos. I also do floating thumb rests, but do you ever tense up? Yes. Uh, well, I stretch. <laughs> That's the first time. And, I, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, a lot of Iron Maiden, dude. Cover a lot of fast shit over and over again and gun, until, gun, until you get yeah until you get past it. It's years like of right running. hand practice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's just like it's just like running a marathon. You know, you're not just gonna run it on your first time. You know, that's you just gotta you hand, gotta right? keep, a great keep going. Yeah, you gotta keep going and keep going and keep going, and finally you get past it. And uh, it's gains, man. It's like lifting weights. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying? Saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Dude, the stretching is a total game changer. Though, like I remember you telling me about that, and that seems like such an obvious thing, but you're like, yeah, if you just stretch your wrist out or whatever, like when you start to get tense, and that shit really does like recharge you for a good amount of time if you're starting to get real tense. Yeah, before we do the covers, because sometimes we have to do them four or five times, and yeah. like 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 one, like the song one. Oh, I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Dude. Dude. Oh, I'm like, Chris, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. <laughs> and he's like, Oh, just keep going. I'm like, All right, great. I'm, like, I'm just gonna do it. So I kept stretching. It's like, All right, and I, it worked out. But I, you know, yeah, I did tense up. It's like, oh, oh, you know. A uh, question for everyone. What bass did you assume you would love or want to love, but just could not? Oh, I don't even want to think about that, man. <laughs> I've had so many heartbreaks. I'll go last. <laughs> I'll go All right, Patrick. Last. You, okay, Nick, do you want to go first? No, I want to go last. Josh? Actually, I... Why would I you ask it. such a painful question? I know, that hurts, man. That I hurts. have mine, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, how dare you ask such a good and honest but painful question <laughs> i'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for this but i see the head stuck already yeah i hear you no dude let's trade then i don't like mine dude i'll trade the <laughs> shit out of your g3 for this <laughs> oh dude i miss my grabber dude that's like my biggest like the one that got away even though i sold it like i chose to give it away that's how but, it always dude, goes though the ripper is cool but i don't know man it's just and yeah, I have the, like the four different modes and everything like that. My buddy was able to install brand new Seymour Duncans in it, completely redid all the wiring and everything, uh. give it the most killer setup. And it's just like, man, this is cool, but 
it's, there's something not there. I, I invested probably 1300, I think into this total. Um, I mean, it was 900 for the base itself, plus all new electronics and then him doing all the work on it too. But it's just, I don't know. You know, when you, it's just, you can't convince yourself that you like it when you don't. Yeah. I hear you. Mm-hmm. I hear you. It's Yeah. I think his name is like, I think it's Rick Danko from the band. Uh, when they played live, uh, the the band, The Last Waltz, I think he used that bass and he wants to put flats and a, and a pick. And for the longest time, I wanted that bass. I was like, dude, this is on the hit list. And then same deal, I got to play it and I was like, it's not for me. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't fall in love with it. Yeah, dude. Uh, similar boat. I'm going to go, I'll go second. Mine was the Schecter Stiletto Custom 5. I liked the way it sounded. I just something about the way it felt and I'm going off just remembering the ones that I've sold and I sold that one. Cause I was like, well, it's the one I liked the least out of everything in here, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It just had a feel to it. Again, I love the, the tone, but the feel was just a little off. Mine's what about you, Joshua? Uh, oh. Or William? Sorry. You said you were going last will. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, off the top of my head, I'm probably going to have to say a music man. Again, you know, probably like an eighteen hundred dollar music man I played, and I was like, "eh, yep, whatever." You I know, was that. what was it? I can't remember, man. I was in a guitar center. It was on the top, and I was like, "Can I play that one?" It was a guitar like, yeah, center, sure. dude. That thing probably had holes in it. The strings yeah. been on there for since you know. <laughs> well, I remember <laughs> it was seasons. fresh. It were fresh strings, but it doesn't mean anything, you know. I remember I played a bongo, and I was like, "What the hell, man? This is just a fat bass." A fat guy playing a fat bass. It doesn't look right. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'll say I'll say a music man. But again, it, it could change. Maybe I play one now and totally be happy with it. Because I mean, that was years ago. So, dude, I got to play that bongo when we were at TGU, man. And like, I really liked it. It pissed me off how much I liked it. <laughs> oh, it's the other I was like, around. shit, now I got to get another one. Like it was all black with like the, Will, you remember? Oh, I remember that. It was all black with the ebony fingerboard and it had like the matte black pick guard with the black headstock. I was like, Patrick is very upset. <laughs> Dude, that, I liked it. It looks like a Dude, toilet seat. So what? I was going to say, I don't like how it looks like the Arby's logo. <laughs> <laughs> <It does. laughs> like, how dare you say something? Because so so that, that is just the hat. That is just the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Will, what were you gonna go with? Uh, mine's a Rickenbacker. Oh, dude, that's what I was gonna say too. Yeah, it was a four thousand three. Exactly. If you knew me as a youth, like late high school, I fucking that's all I wanted. Like my my goals were that <laughs> that alone. I still don't have one, but I've played them multiple times, and it's just like, oh, man, like this is my hands. I was so excited, though. It's like I don't, I don't like it. I well, small like- world. I had one of Chris and Will's old bandmates, Rickenbacker four thousand three, for a long time. <laughs> oh yeah. shit! Remember Weston? Right. Oh yeah. yeah I, I had I had Weston's four thousand three for a legit like two years, dude. And I like gave it a setup, and I was like, I put some strings, and I'll do this thing. And then I was like, oh, maybe it's not. Maybe tape wounds. No, that ruined it. Maybe I changed the tuning, and I the the more I fought it, the less I liked it. I it's couldn't hard, do it, man. And then if you look in the in the uh, Rickenbacker like manual it says like don't use this bass with anything other than Rickenbacker strings. <laughs> oh, gosh. I mean every <laughs> boss pedal Straight says only use boss power supplies. That's oh, true. God. Well let's flip it the other way. Have you guys ever like expected to dislike an instrument and then ended up loving it? Your 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 uh the bass you just got your Thunderbird. I know that was that was gonna be my I answer too. Despise Thunderbirds. Chris's Thunderbird is incredible. Sounds great. Yeah, plays plays great. great. Super plays, uncomfortable dude. to play, but oh. it feels great. In well, Once you it figure it out, it's comfortable. Yeah, no, for real. Like, I don't know what it was, but that thing changed my life. There it is. I, I've never actually played. I don't think I played a Gibson Thunderbird. I played every other kind of Thunderbird, though. Gibson and I cannot out, stand them. It just, oh. there's, I have this super love hate with Gibson basses just in general, where I really want to like them. But then it's just like I lose that just like that love after a while where it's just like that wasn't love. That was a <laughs> lie, you know? <laughs> I love them all, dude. I love Gibson. Bases, I love their guitars. guitars, but I'm having a hard time falling in love with some of their basses too. Chris, I love your SG bass when it had the flats on it. That was my favorite right there. When that one had the flats, that was my favorite iteration that that bass has ever seen. That was phenomenal. But like it's not for me. I love their guitars. I love their guitars. But Most what's of that? that rack is Gibson. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> Patrick, have you, ever, have you ever played one of those Dunable or Dunable? 
bases. I don't know how to. Oh, dude, they look sick, baby. The R two. Oh, yes, yes, that's the one. Girl, that's that <laughs> shit I want so bad. The R two. Okay, Sorry, so the, the Gibson R D style is just like pure sex. Like yeah. I fucking love that style. I have a Chris Novoselic uh, Gibson R D that this was like my 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 white whale for the longest time finally bought one for a good price it was like 1100 bucks and if you go on reverb the cheapest ones like i think like 1400 right now and i loved it for like two months it even has my favorite uh seymour duncan sjb3 pickups in it and it, it there's something about it man but then i played the r2 at nam for the first time i think two or three years ago and Dude, Sasha's got that shit down, man. It looks amazing. I've always wanted like a like a two and two style headstock. I'm yep. so used to the Fender four in line or mm. the, you know. So like it, it immediately started when I saw their headstocks, and oh, I was yeah. like, that's sick, two and two. And then obviously you see more about the bass, and you start re- learning about the electronics and stuff. I got to get my hands on one, dude. I mean, it's all made by Sasha. Like that's the thing. It's just like a lot, I feel like a lot of people see the price of Dunnables. And they're just like, why is that base twenty three, twenty five hundred dollars? It's like, oh, because it was fucking made by the guy from Intronaut. Yeah, dude, you know? dude's a professional luthier. What do you get? What you like, pay for? He makes the pickups too. Like, come on. I didn't know that he winds his own pickups. Mm-hmm. That's those amazing. are all like dunnable pickups. I think there's a few that he'll add, like just like very specific pickups into it. But mm-hmm. other than that, for the most part, they're dunnable pickups. And then there's that uh, one green uh, R two that has a that's also a bong. As well, <laughs> good, pretty, sweet. very good, pretty sweet, pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got about fifteen minutes left or so. Uh, did we want to? Did you guys come up with any news sections? I forgot. I asked you earlier, and I totally forgot. <laughs> that's a no. That's a, All that's right. a hard no. <laughs> Dead air. Dead air. <laughs> <laughs> the callback. Inside joke. There's plenty of news going around, dude. You can find some. <laughs> well, do we? Uh, let's. I want to talk a little bit about what we each, uh, what each channel has coming up. So, Patrick, do you, uh, do you want to give anybody any kind of preview as to what they can expect? I'm assuming that most people who are here are subscribed to your channel. So you should subscribe be. to my channel or subscribe to these guys' channels, and. I got nothing, man. <laughs> <laughs> you got nothing coming up in the near future? Well, I got something coming up for you, baby. That's this week think. on the uh, Patrick Hunter channel, uh, I have the Sterling by Music Man short scale. Yeah, buddy. Ooh. Um, yeah, short scales are like the most fun thing on the planet. Hell yeah. Coastline. Yeah, dude. And I actually just thought about this as I got these strings in. Um, I've never played piccolo strings before. Huh. And I got these for, I think it was like 13 bucks. Cool. And it's just like the gauge is 20 to 52. That's like A to C tuning, right? Uh, I'm not quite sure C to be tuning? honest. I literally like, I'm just going to do a video. You I'm can get away do... with standard tuning on that. Yeah, I think that's, that's guitar gauge. I'm basically just planning on making a video where it's just like, what are piccolo bass strings? We're going to find out together because I literally don't know anything about these except for they're like really high pitched. Yeah, I'd go for like, like super short scales. Or something like that. That'd be my best guess. Yeah. I, I, don't I must officially. be mistaken. I could have sworn they were A to C. Like uh, Victor Wooten does a lot of piccolo tuning. Uh, and then I think what Stu Ham, his very first bass, I think was a piccolo bass. And I thought it was tuned A to C. I, could I mean, I guess to be fair, you could tune it to whatever you want, right? I mean, to a degree. Yeah, yeah I'm on. not North yeah. Korea. You can do whatever you want. I <laughs> <laughs> got for that. I'm not your dad. <laughs> but those are like two things that I got coming up and some other big things too. And um, I guess this one's like kind of obvious if you watch my channel. But I bought this piece of shit uh, <laughs> about six months ago. It's uh, a wish.com. If you don't know what wish.com is, it's like eBay. But the Wild West of eBay, where it's just like, ooh, is my identity going to get stolen? <laughs> Find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. Plus. And I'm com- I'm just going to completely gut this thing and put in good shit, actually. So I got a couple companies online right now, and 
I'm going to see what I can do. I'm definitely going to sand this fucking neck down. That's for sure. Is it all glossy? It's disgusting. I hate gloss necks. I hate oiled necks. I like natural necks. That's it. I'm a natural neck kind of guy. <laughs> <laughs> as far me. as our channel, we have, Josh, do you want to talk about some of the covers that we do? That we got coming uh, up? Well, we did the ones we already done. Yeah, the ones we did, what was it, oh, two okay. weeks ago? Yeah, we I did um I can't remember the name. Well the Deftones cover by yep. uh what's the name of the song right now, man? I'm drawing a blank. <laughs> Shove it. <laughs> Shove it, yeah. Ooh, baby. And, yeah, we and, got that coming up. And inside the fire by disturbed. Yeah. And that's all we have right now, right? Yeah, and then we have a uh, insurrection kind of fell through the cracks, so I'm gonna release that one too. Oh yeah, yeah. And then um, I'm gonna play you guys just a preview of the video we have coming out Friday. Uh, I have to do a screen share here. I'm just gonna give you about a minute of it. So this will be the video for Friday. I don't actually watch our channel, Josh. Do you do covers? Oh, <laughs> surprisingly. And now this there's gonna be a there's gonna be a fun reference that I hope Will catches here. Today on the base channel, we're finally checking out the fur coat fuzz from Orange. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> So that's that. We checked out the fur coat fuzz, and that'll be God. That's a good to, sounding that's fuzz. Beef. That's that's a just beefy. that's just all straight up at noon. I want wow. it. Thunderbird I want sounds it. really fucking it. rad. That's the Epi Thunderbird too, huh? Yeah, yeah. I recorded that before I got the Gibson. Man. That thing sounded awesome. <laughs> I know, dude. Yeah, I right. also have to say that the fur coat is a sick fuzz. It it's funny really when we is. first started this chat. I was just like, it's funny that like you're bringing that one up because I was just recording this like, earlier. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we're uh, we're giving it away, so uh, I don't know. Maybe uh... should I subscribe? <laughs> yeah, if you're not subscribed, Nick, you should definitely definitely subscribe because you. But could... then I'm gonna unsubscribe if I win. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not you're gonna be like every Patreon you. person who signed up for the wiretap thing. Oh. If you're listening, if you're listening, boo. <laughs> <laughs> you hear them, Patrick Hunter. You hear them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, yeah, with Patrick, you were talking about, you know, the, the show me your base thing. And we were trying to find ways to get people involved on the channel. And one of the ideas that we had was TC Electronics sent me 40 wiretaps. And I was like, we'll make a Patreon tier. You come join at that level, as you know. And uh, we'll send you guys a wiretap. You can record your riffs and we'll reamp you just like we reamp Josh, Nick, and Will. And uh, a couple people signed up. Some people, I see what I did was I didn't realize I had it set to where it charges you the first of the month. So some people would sign up like on the 15th, I'd send them the wiretap, not realizing, and they'd get a free wiretap, pull their Patreon, and I got no riffs. That happened like three or four times. And you and lost that on money for shipping. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then there, there were people that, you know, once I changed it, that they would pull out. They got so basically a $10 wiretap and then, which, I mean, that'd be fine, but like, you know at least you don't want to be on the channel you know like that was the part it's like i don't know i, I just feel like if i if cs guitars you know if, if colin was like hey you want to be on them like yeah yes i do oh what totally do I, what do i need to do because I, well you've already been on his channel yeah he's such a sweetheart i love yeah. his accent so much <laughs> <laughs> like you know how like people joke about like oh like american girls just love any man who has any sort of accent that's like me it's 100%. american men love, love that accent <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that wiretap thing was a bummer but uh you know hey it is what it is and it's like free promotion for your band too like, yes for like whatever yeah like, what the hell i know uh, what are you using that wiretap for? Be honest. Are you using it? Most Me? people probably aren't. Yeah. Because a lot of people couldn't figure it out. And it's just like, all right, well. That's somebody TC's says, fault. Somebody says those wiretap thieves do not represent the spirit of face. I feel sad for them. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> Appreciate you, homie. Damn. Good man. Yeah. Someone says, also, Chris, you said I, 
Oh, probably in your review, the orange terror bass, that volume might be a problem in clubs. I've heard hardcore bands use the older 500 vis through an amp. Yeah. Okay. I should have uh, elaborated on that. I, I said that volume might be an issue with that amp. I mostly meant that amp with the 112. Um, that combination, you might have an issue. But yeah, if you run it through an 810 or a 410 or a 115, 500 watts is great. You should have no issue. But with a 112, you might be pushing that cabinet. So that's all I have to say about that. I did have a, I did have a, a question for the group in lieu of us not doing any news this time. I have a question for the group. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, I want let, let's confess confess some sins, boys. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll go last. Uh, dirty dirty secret as far as music goes. What is your uh, what is your dirty little secret? That like what, what kind of music when you go home? Oh, I was gonna know, say not that at work. Turn the phone off. Homies are not around. This is the kind of music that I go to. I don't want anybody to know about. What is your dirty little secret when it comes to your favorite kind of music? Open with what I listen to, man. Like, yeah, same. If you're gonna judge me for my music. You're a fucking dick. So like, <laughs> I don't really care. I just tell people what I listen to. But like, oh man, lately I've been listening to uh, Stimulator Jones off the of Stones, bro. He has some crazy like old eighties like fuck. I don't know. It's hard to even me know to have, what like, that a is. Dirty secret that? because like I, I don't know. None of it's secret. I just love. Yeah, I don't. To to. Same. I don't feel <laughs> guilty about any of it, but I guess uncharacteristic <laughs> of what you would think I would like. Um, you know, some of the. Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Ariana Grande, you know, like I'm not like avid into it, but like there's some jams where it's like, yeah, that's that's a jam. You're a huge but Lady Gaga so fan. I know good pop that songs that is true. nowadays. There are so many good pop songs nowadays with so many sick fucking bass lines. Dude, you guys see that, yeah. shit that Nathan Navarro has been doing like the boosted bass videos mm -hmm. where he's like, dude, so sick. Like, yeah, good stuff. I love that so dude, much. Dude, Dua Lipa's new album, Charlie XCX, XCX, right? Whatever care, her yeah. name is. Dude, her new album is kick ass. Yeah. If you don't like Paramore, I don't like you. Like <laughs> Panic at the Disco is fucking incredible. Brandon Yuri yeah. is a like just inspiration because the dude can play any instrument ever. Like the weekend. The weekend. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any like ones that I'm like, oh, I can't show nobody. Like I understand <laughs> that, but like I've never felt like if someone's just like, dude, you listen to that shit that's fucking gay. Where it's just like, you know what? Like <laughs> I also had a Pantera shirt in seventh grade, you know? I'm from Dallas, like, come on. <laughs> of course I love Pantera, but at the same time, have you guys even listened to After Laughter from Paramore? Like, Dude, come I on. can honestly say that I have listened to that album like probably close to 40 times. It's a really Dude, good album. It's, it's really good. Phenomenal. Really good. Yeah, that was good. Patrick, I told you that my wife and I did a Paramore song at our wedding, right? Yep. Yeah, Nick played bass on that one. It was, it was really fun. I was there. I remember not being invited to that wedding. Yeah, you just couldn't make the flight out, I remember. <laughs> you wouldn't pay for my flight. Damn it. Shots being fired. Take cover. Will's like, I gotta go. Oh, man. <laughs> Here's oh, out. Man. We, have, we still got quite a few questions coming in, but uh, oh, Taylor Swift, 1989 is a great album. Yes, I agree. And, I've been listening uh, to a lot of uh, Tatsuro Yamashita lately, which is like 80s japanese city pop it's like very Ooh. weird stuff it's no secret that i like weird music like you know <laughs> that, yeah no secret there but like dude it's kind of like if you like steely dan at all it's a oh, lot yeah. like steely dan but like the japanese records that were produced in the 80s the bass is like super far forward in the mix you showed it's me all that like i remember that jazz or slapped p bass is that one i showed you in particular mm -hmm. it was a crazy cool slap p bass yeah tatsuro yamashita and i got i got real heavy into pop. yacht rock for a minute Dude, I remember that. Yeah, and Sirius XM, and then that's when you showed me that that band. Oh, I remember that. Like, yeah, that dude, like, he's, yeah. a, he's a composer. Him and uh, Tatsuro Yamashita and Mariana, I can't remember her last name. She wrote Plastic Love. They're like considered the king and queen of city pop. They're actually married. <laughs> They're actually hu so husband and wife. So they really oh, are the king and queen right. of city pop. Like literally and figuratively, <laughs> the king and queen of city pop. Is it Mariana Grande? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's an okay joke. Like that's a six out of ten. God, generous <laughs> very generous of your own jokes there speaking of, uh, speaking of stealing dan another one that's like incredible that i've been listening to since it came out is theo katzman's album modern johnny sings oh my god dude. hell yeah hell beautiful yeah beautiful tracks i saw him live right before the quarantine crazy madness began i saw him at the, the fonda i think in la dude incredible show i was standing right in front of i was standing right in front of joe darts and my my dreams were just like 
achieve that night. And Theo's just like a hell of a performer, dude. And just like the crowd, like, you know, there's something different about Wolfpack and like Theo fans. There's like a whole different camaraderie there. So like just being in a crowd of people with like that like minded. Oh, my God. It was so cool. It was one of the greatest shows I've ever been to. That makes a show so much better, dude, totally. when you're surrounded by people who are into it. Like, I remember seeing Radiohead at the Santa Barbara Bowl, and it was like being at a show, Humble Flex, I've seen him twice. Um, it was like being at a show with like, you know, 10,000 of your closest friends. You it's know, crazy. everyone was like yeah. dancing and thing every. So I'm sure being that close to the front of the stage when you saw uh, Theo, uh, it must have been nuts, man. That right. must have been good. So that's, that's, that's definitely one that people need to check out if you haven't. Yeah, agreed. All right. Well, that is uh, that is the end of the hour. If uh, I want to be sensitive to Patrick's time zone, because it's coming up on or it is nine p.m. over there, right? It is twenty one hundred. Yes, but it's also I'm in quarantine now, baby. Yeah, I got nowhere to be. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's all it's on you guys. Do you guys want to keep going, or do we want to call it a day or a night? In in this case. I don't care either way. Whatever I'm down to keep going. We got, really more, time, we got more questions. Chat. Uh, yeah, we got yeah, Will's yeah. Will's MPC beats are worth a shout out. Dude, thank you. I'm digging it. I'll listen to it when I go to work, dude. I'll I'll thank pop your, your stuff on. I appreciate it. You'll like pop my what, my sir? You heard me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Someone mentioned in the chat way earlier too. Will, uh, someone mentioned that your new album is sick, dude. The, yes. Uh, the Kumomi record, which I totally agree. I listened to that shit twice one day and then a bunch of times the next day. Awesome so new much, record. Dude. It's on Thank Spotify. So K U M O M I. The Honey yeah, Principle. The Honey Principle. Yeah, it's anywhere anywhere you normally find music, you'll find it. Um, it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I love those dudes. I've missed them so much since all this. Like I haven't seen my bandmates since the quarantine and everything began. So that's been a fucking pain in my ass. But I love <laughs> that album and listening to it makes me happy in these times where I don't get to see my homies. So because it's happy music, it, it really just like is. fucking bumps. Like it's yeah, just one of those like. Dun, 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 <laughs> I, I mean what was the like, song all I hear is your bass throughout the whole thing anyway Thank I, you love guys so much. Oh, I love it it wasn't it wasn't monkey marauder but it was the other one that you said you have sometimes i have a hard time playing live the kind of sea capped i don't remember the name dude oh p taps no the the the, no. the ocean pirate one inspired name. oh smugglers bay smugglers bay dude that yeah. was legit one of my favorite songs on the on the record too that one's fun that one's fun if you listen to the verses my bass lines in there are very like james jamerson inspired if you listen to kind of like the right hand rhythms yep very jamerson stuff going on but i mean like i'm saying that myself so it might not be true because <laughs> everybody's like oh yeah dude i play like jamerson all the time well where is the where is the best place that people can go to find that uh i listen to it on apple music spotify is another huge one those are like obviously the, the big boys but if you use like amazon music or if you use the other one it's on there it's on there. google so google, i'm just i'm uh just gonna comment uh on my personal youtube uh are you using youtube or yeah i'm just putting it in the chat oh he's dropping links so oh, the, the allegation oh, oh, okay. which is calvin uh, i don't have a link per se but i just the band name is kumomi and the album is the honey principle so you'll see it there so whatever uh streaming platform i guess is your favorite you can find it there anyway sorry nick well, I was gonna say uh, the al- the allegations, which is I think that's Calvin's account. Maybe uh, shout out Sirith Ungle, which is super rad, dude. Local- Sirith Ungle. Yeah, I man. School. I went to high school wow. with a girl. Her uncle's the vocalist. Really? Yeah. So that's they're still that. touring and stuff. They did. Uh, they're doing a bunch of stuff with Night Demon. Jarvis <laughs> Leatherby, I think, is playing bass. They're awesome dudes. What Every single one of them. And the new record is dude. great. Holy shit! It's a stage name. Still, oh. that's like that's a that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, we got another question for Josh. It's my impression, or Josh really digs hard when he is playing bass. Do you get tired of digging so hard? I love digging. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it, it all depends on the song when they actually kick it in. Because, like, if there's verses where it's not really heavy, I'm not going to be digging in all the time. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it's just going to be too much. So um, I try to play to the song too with my right hand. Uh, I'll give you an example, like uh, Orion. I can't just be like, burn on it, burn it, and like, mm-hmm. what the fuck are you doing, dude? So, yeah, it all depends. So you call for the song. So, But most of the time, yes, I am trying to get as much as I can out of that fucking bass. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Who plays for the song, dude? I play for me. Sorry, bro. <laughs> me. Oh. <laughs> played the <laughs> lot. I got a closer for you guys. Someone's watching yeah. us at 3 a.m. 
appreciate you. We all appreciate you. Dude, for real? That's what's up, That's man. Crazy. You're the real MVP, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are you, jet lag? Jesus, go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys had to call or, or per se say you have your own technique, where would you say you got it from? Left hand, Getty Lee. Right hand, Joe Dart. Now, I'm not as good as them. That's just where I got my inspiration. That's the sexiest yeah. like explanation of anything I've ever heard, Will. <laughs> so matter of fact, too. I love the confidence. Well, I just know that's how it, that's how it be. <laughs> you be like that. I came over from, well, my, my first instrument was drums, and then I came over from guitar. So a lot of this is definitely adopted from guitar as far as the palm mute and pick control. And as far as that goes, I'd say probably Hetfield just learning the, the way he accents like palm mutes to open, da, 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 you know, I definitely got a lot of that. But I think still, man, it's, it's hard to describe. I think like really a lot of my base inspiration over probably a majority of me playing is uh, Chris uh, Wilson home from muse. Like, honestly, cool just all around no matter what and then i guess for my picking style though not in terms of inspiration but similar to is uh clay gober from polythia oh. um he's also a dallas boy around here but he does a very similar thing where he'll it's like pick and slap but you saw the pick in your hand sort of thing i've had a lot of people on my channel be like dude what the hell is that and it's like <laughs> But well, you can still like, da, 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 bang, like this real super quick back and forth. And it's super fun too. Once you get the hang of it, your hybrid but, picking is sick, dude. I remember when we were hanging out at NAMM in the hotel and you were playing Rick's Telecaster, even you all like, you still have that hybrid pick technique, dude. It's sick, man. It's a good, <laughs> it's weird. I, I it's cause I'm left-handed, but I always learn like, I, there was nothing but right-handed instruments in the house growing up. So mm -hmm. thank God I didn't learn left-handed because there's so many less <laughs> options all around. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. And everything's <laughs> way more expensive too. But it's just one of those things I there's this part of me that's like I would be such a better bassist if I did play left-handed. But at the same time, it's just like who cares? <laughs> 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 like I always Freedom. feel that I play really weird, and some people have been like, Oh, where should I go uh, for like dude? You got lessons lessons or what? And it's like, ooh, my buddy uh Jamie at the the basis.net does though because yeah. i sure as hell fucking don't because i can't teach shit <laughs> that, be like, i don't know dude my uh my uh copy of your lesson program should be coming in the mail here pretty soon <laughs> <laughs> i had so much fun with that video oh dude that was one of my that favorite videos it was so good <laughs> what was it patty's slap what was it again oh shit i don't that was so know. funny god that was funny <laughs> it was like Patty slap lesson 101, 420, <laughs> volume four. I just remember Patty. being it being in Comic Sans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was the best. That was enough for me to hate myself for the rest of my life anyway. Clayton's signature base. Yeah, signature. anything in com yeah, Comic Sans is not a good move. That was Patty slappy tappy instructional guide. <laughs> slappy tappy. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh, dude, that was so good. Beautiful. Dubious, what would you say is your, uh, your big base influence as far as your attack goes. uh steve harris for my right hand yep and i would say getty for my left but i'm just still obviously not as fast as he is i try to be as uh i wouldn't say perfect but more <sighs> technical in my left hand i don't know how to explain it just right on every time not slipping a note I hate that. It pisses me the fuck off. Like precise, <laughs> I guess. Precise, yes. I try to be right on the money every time. And if I'm off, you'll see it in my face. <laughs> kind of gives it away. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'll yeah, actually I'm smile. Yeah. If I'm smiling, you know there's a problem. <laughs> Dude, that's the best part is like when you see musicians play, and if there's a random thing that happens in their set, like even if you don't know their songs sort of thing, if it's just a band you've never heard of or never seen, maybe they're an opener or something like that. And you just randomly see like two of the musicians, like and yeah. just start like laughing at each other. You're just like, Oh, they just fucked up. <laughs> even you're giving, away, you're giving away the trade. Oh, secrets, yeah, dude. dude. You're giving away the trade secrets. Dude, there's I mean, a part in the Cubo <laughs> video that we, we use the Cubo video a lot in the, in the videos, but there's one song where, Eddie 
crack his voice cracks hard in the in the actual you know in the room we overdubbed it but you can, every time i see it will looks over and just like looks at him and just laughs <laughs> and it is just the, and i got it like not only did i get it on camera i actually cut to that part as he laughs so it's in the video <laughs> and it's so good for normal people would be like that dude's so happy <laughs> oh he's miserable oh my god don't call me out like that nick <laughs> oh lord oh, what about lord. you nick uh it's got to be like victor wooten in the left hand and like les oh. claypool and like james oh, in the middle bro oh, bringing out that jameson though <laughs> flex no um i have to say like to this day i was screwing around playing some black sabbath lines a little while ago i tuned my bass down to c sharp and uh, busted out my my P bass, turned it down, tune it down to C sharp, dude. So much of my bass playing is Geezer Butler inspired, like a silly amount is Geezer Butler inspired to this day. Um, and then like there's like certain things that Les Claypool will do that I'll like try to cop his like little triplet licks where he like like he'll cop that lick a lot. Um, but yeah, probably I would say more than anything, it would be Geezer Butler is one of my biggest inspirations as far as my playing. Um, just awesome. I wish I could play even halfway as well as he can. But uh, yeah, awesome style. You know really. what's nuts, dude? It's like I've heard you play a million times, and now that you say it, I totally fucking hear that and see that. Mm-hmm. But somehow yeah. I had never noticed that before. That's funny. But yeah, I think it's because I, when you hear Nick play live, it's so much of it is like blues stuff. Yeah, that you don't. True, it's true. not geezer lines. It's just geezer attack. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why because I'm I'm in the same boat. It didn't click for me immediately. There's certain fills that he'll do too. Like I was, I was noodling when I was playing like Children of the Grave, and I was just kind of noodling around. And like I did a like a fill, th- and he did it like at the exact same time. It was super close, and, and like I was it. like, "Oh my god, this is just stuff that had been like brewing, you know, had been steeping for years, not even realizing how much I was taking from him until I like sat and tried to learn line for line a bunch of his stuff, dude. Amazing bass player, amazing. Yeah, there you go. All right. So basically, if you're looking for a technique, just find somebody, some music you like to listen to and just try to play it. See where it goes from there, right? Yeah, I would say, I mean, even further, yes, learn, definitely learn as many of their songs as, as you can, because not only do you get the technique and the style down, but I think it helps in your journey for when you write, you know, your first 20 songs are going to sound like your favorite band. And then you slowly figure it out and it slowly evolves. And so I think, I think learning the songs is a huge one. Mm-hmm. And Chris and I used to play in a, a, like a worship group at a church for a while. And when we would lead it, we would always like play <laughs> rush stuff in there. Like we would find a way, we'd find the key of the song and the chords and find a way to work like a rush riff into it. Cause we were just like rush fanboys still are at heart. Yeah. That's honestly a really, really good way to do it too. Like that taught me how to implement the things that you do learn into something quote unquote original, something that you're doing. So I don't know how else to really apply that other than how we were doing it. Like not many people get the opportunity to like have that free range, but <laughs> trying to find a way to implement those techniques you learn into something that's not by that band is a really, really valuable skill. Yeah. You know, it's funny in that same church group, I, uh, I did a trivium melody in one of those songs. Like, <laughs> it was the, it was on, the melody. Man. It was the, crazy. it was the intro melody to, uh, down from the sky. <laughs> But it was like this really <laughs> slow, mellow song. It just happened to be in B. And so I just I used to play that riff. Yeah. And nobody nobody knew. <laughs> oh, Bass Brain says embarrassingly early Kiss fan. And dude, don't be embarrassed by that. Kiss yeah, is dude. awesome. Especially dude, kiss early is Kiss. Sick. Early Kiss would be shit, dude. Yeah. Oh my God. I mean, I like some of their 80s stuff, but yeah, I mean, from from the debut to Dynasty, you can't really go wrong. The first there's a lot of oh go for it, Patrick. The first, oh, sorry, the first concert my parents ever went to was Kiss, and then ACDC opened up for them. Oh, <laughs> what year was this? Uh, fuck if I know, man. My my first concert was, know, was yeah. yeah, I know. I'll, I'll go look it up. My first concert was Kiss as well in uh, 2000 with the original lineup. Oh, so, nice, dang. Dang. yeah. That, dang. that was that was a great show. I still have the tour book in the garage from that show that you gave me. Ooh, I'm gonna yeah. maybe ask you for that back. It's not. What was y'all's I first actually show? don't know where that is. Never mind. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, that's good. What is everyone's first show? Ooh, you ready? My first my first concert ever was Weird Al Yankovic at the Greek with Chris. Yeah, I was there. 
And then my second concert was the Misfits at the Ventura Theater with Chris. Both of those <laughs> concerts make a lot of sense now. <laughs> Josh? I believe it was Ronnie James Dio at the Ventura Theater. What the Dude, fuck? nice, man. Yeah. My dad saw yeah. Rainbow back in the day, dude, and he said that was the oh, loudest dude. concert he ever went to. That's so sick. Oh. Yeah, that was a luck. That was a luck thing. It was a friend of a friend that had a ticket and they couldn't go. Oh, they gave it dude. to us. We were waiting in line, and we seen mm. all these like older people with big old black boots and leathered out, and we're all scared. You know, I was like twelve or thirteen at the time. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck are we doing?" And they were actually, <laughs> and they actually had the top floor of the Ventura Theater open. It was jam packed in there. That's so like rare, a, dude. Well, I saw exactly. Lamb of God. They opened the top half, and that was the first time I had ever seen yeah. the, the upper tier open. Yeah, and there was a Jethro Tull wannabe type of band opening up for them. They got booed off the stage. Oh, that's the second yeah. time I've heard of that happening at the Yeah, and then um, Ronnie James Dio came out, of course, later on, and I, I don't, I don't know any of their songs, and he just runs out, and he's like, "This small on the stage," and I'm like, "Not that far away from it." Well, okay. <laughs> so small. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "He's like, yeah. I was like, "Oh my god, what is this?" It was so, it was so, so awesome. <laughs> Nick, first show? Oh, man, I got the best one. John Cougar Mellencamp. Yeah. Wow. I thought you said you joke. had the best one. That is not a joke. That was actually my very first concert. We <laughs> won tickets. One, <laughs> we won tickets from like a local radio show. My mom nice. like, called in randomly and it's like, call now to win four tickets to see John Cougar Mellencamp. <laughs> She's like, Get Remember on the that boat. guy? Get on yeah. The boat now. Get rid of these tickets. damn tickets. They're free. We can't even give these <laughs> fucking things away. Where was it? Uh, it was, um, I can't remember. I used to live in a city called Clayton uh, in Northern California, and it was at the Concord Pavilion. That's where it was. Santana used to play there all the time. Santana used to play there like every three months randomly. Oh, dude, that's so oh, rad. Shit. Yeah, but I never saw Santana there. I saw John Cougar. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Yes. So I seen, uh, so yeah, John, John Mellencamp, and then he was John Cougar. He was John Cougar Mellencamp, and he was John. Mel- I can't remember if I saw him as John Cougar Mellencamp or John Mellencamp. I don't remember, but I definitely saw him. It's like seeing Patrick- Snoop Dogg and then Snoop Lion. So, right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> right. Patrick, what was your first show? Uh, hilariously enough, Muse. Uh, oh, cool. Perfect. I was in eighth grade, and yeah. it was just like uh, right after Black Holes and Revelations came out, and. Oh my- uh, I went my with my older brother and his friends, and it was just like, this is it, like, sort of thing. You know, you're 13, and you get to see, like, your favorite fucking band, and it's just like, this is nuts. And I've seen them, like, four or five times since then. It's like with Incubus. I've seen Incubus, like, six times. <laughs> nice. Nice. Very cool. I've seen Incubus twice. Southern what was California your... Boys. Yeah. What, uh, okay, let's go. What, what was your favorite show that you've ever seen? little bit rush, tougher the final rush concert yeah oh dude that chris and i went to it's it's got to be a toss-up though because that and then snm2 that was also a great one. like two extremely iconic once in a lifetime things that i went to once in my lifetime each or whatever that's crazy dude like it's a really hard choice there because both of those bands are so iconic on a personal level and on just a global scale like, and they're just such yeah. important important shows yeah definitely so one of those two for sure josh um, 2004, I seen Iron Maiden at the Gibson Amphitheater, and Arch Enemy opened up for him. Oh, uh, dude, that's uh, a killer line. That was when Wages of Sin just came out, and I did not know who Arch Enemy was, and it blew Amazing. my mind. That's sick. I that's love a good surprise Arch right there. Yeah, and then uh, I think it was the Dance of Death tour, so it was actually still a pretty good album. And that was a was great record. Stoked. Oh my god! Yeah. So yeah, horrible was, was album cover. Year. Worst yeah. album cover. Oh. Sure. Those awful CGI oh, graphics. Dude, Eddie oh, standing sure. in the middle. It's, ugh. I definitely fought that in a video game once. Yeah. <laughs> I seen David Draymond in, in the audience with like two chicks walking by. I'm like, Shh, this guy from Disturb, bro. He's like, no way. He looked right at us. Kind of did. I thought he was going to go, oh, why? You know, but he, he's like, <laughs> why? I'll keep your mouth yeah. shut. He yeah, had two hot chicks around his arm. He's just going to go sit down. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, so. Nick, best show? This is, this is a really, really tough one. 
This is a really, really tough one for me because I've been fortunate enough to see some pretty cool shows. I did see, I went to, oh man. Okay, so it's either going to be the time I saw, the first time I saw Radiohead at Berkeley, it was like a big weekend thing. That's the crazy thing about these events is that it's more sometimes more than just a show. It's like the whole series of events that lead up to that like awesome moment. You oh, know? dude, totally. Yeah. So it was like a weekend that I, I drove with my best friend up to Northern California. We were going to go see Radiohead in Berkeley. Um, but like we spent the weekend there and we like stayed with a friend and it happened to be Earth Day. So Bart was free. So we literally just rode Bart all around. And then when we finally... We drove right into Berkeley, saw the show, came back from the show, spent the weekend in San Francisco. Like it was rad. The show was awesome. So, but it was right before they released In Rainbows. So if you guys are, yeah, there you go. So if you guys are a Radiohead fan, I saw like Weird Fishes, like before Dude, did they it was. Do the, did they do the um, videotape, but like with drums and shit? I think they go, did. There's I'm pretty a version sure they floating did around tape. from before that album came out, and it's totally different than the fucking album version. And yeah. It's incredible. And if you got to see that, I'm going to come to your house and punch you in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Will's breaking out of quarantine. <laughs> breaking quarantine, breaking faces. Dude, somebody just put, just Google Dance of Death album art. Jesus Christ. Oh, <laughs> oh I'm sorry. I'm sorry we put that in your head. That's dude. the dude watching us at 3 a.m. too. So. Oh, yeah, that dude's rad. Oh, he ain't going to be sleeping all night. Uh, He's like, I yes, didn't need that PS1 graphics in my life. Yeah. Oh, that's a nightmare. That's, that's yeah. Uh, so so it's either when I saw Radiohead coincidentally before In Rainbows had been released they were still like kind of writing some of the stuff and finishing it or it's that when I saw when I went to OzFest um, and I saw the uh, Black Sabbath Iron Maiden one I was at mm. that one where Iron I was Maiden 2000, I was the one I was at I was you like, were oh, at five. that same OzFest? yeah, yeah. Oh, 05 I have a it was the only one yep. remember when they when they like when Sharon cut the power on oh, Iron I was Maiden? fucking pissed and they were like throwing three eggs. times they did three, three times, times they cut power dude Bruce Dickinson doing his thing and he's like ah, pointing at the crowd and the crowd starts singing run to the hills and they like didn't miss a beat power came back on band jumps right back in dude it, Ew. What? Yeah, that's that is yeah. such a that's bad ass cool, moment dude. to be like, "Fuck you, cut my power, do yep. what you want to do." That was I'm the not only reason stop. why I went to that show was for that, and that's when I discovered Mastodon and a bunch of other bands. But Holy shit! Yeah, man. and it was crazy about that was that that whoever was throwing ice because it was ice getting thrown at uh, Bruce. I didn't when see ice. I knew power. there were eggs because it was like Zach yeah. Wild was like and his crew. Zach was running through during Run to the Hills with an American flag flipping, like, <laughs> flipping off. <laughs> yeah. I lost a lot of respect for Zach Wild when that all went down. That kind of pissed me off, dude. That was not cool. But like, wasn't yeah, like that person better flag. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, shit. That was a big deal. It was a good show. It was. Great. I remember I remember at the time, my sister went to that too. She went to the 05 Odds Bets and bought me a t shirt. And at the time, like Slipknot was my shit, and they had just released uh, Volume 3. And they were playing that Ozfest, so I was like, "You gotta give me something Slipknot." And she was probably back an Ozfest T-shirt. And at the time, I was like, "This is a Slipknot. I don't care." And now I'm like, "Holy <laughs> shit, it's an Ozfest yeah. T-shirt from like, That what? was the one when when Satan was sitting on the toilet smoking yes, a cigarette. Yes, exactly. That's the shirt I had. I had that same. I had that same shirt actually. Oh, yeah. It doesn't fit me, but it's, it's, it exists. Yep. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, 23 <laughs> minutes later. I think we're just about out of topics here. Patrick, thank you very much for joining us, dude. Like yeah. I said, man, so before we I started, you guys. I, miss I miss the hell out of you, bro. You too, dude. I really miss you guys. I wish all of you would just move to Texas already. Considering dude, was... the rest of California is. Man, you're going to get us. You're going to get our ass speed if we move out there. If you're like, it was him. He told us to come here. Uh, yeah, Patrick, you got to come over here and have some good Mexican food. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> oh shit! I don't know, man. Okay, I swear to Christ. I swear to Christ. <laughs> fuck out. I've had that long conversations about Mexican man. food with this man, That's dude. I, I've, I've had some. I've had great Mexican food in Texas. It's it's it's, like it's not California, but it's delicious. You stupid. I swear to Christ. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not as good. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's good if that's all you have, you know. If that's all you can oh my fuck! I swear to God, trying to alienate one of the biggest states in our country right now, man. Relax. Go get some brisket. Will's like the political landscapes cannot handle this. Like we can't talk about meats. That's all people are clinging on to is their meats. We can't be. Yo, we dude. Have meats. I wish I wish I could put like a picture on screen 
uh, the fucking flank steak that I made the other day, the fajitas. Oh my god! This I don't even know why I'm trying. No, this oh, is a stupid was, idea. Was <laughs> I was there. I'm with you. Oh, nice. Ooh. You, you can barely okay. say, but no, ooh, no, no. ah. No, let's, let's see the you want the El Rancho? Got some good ass fucking carne. Mm. I I'll do want to. I do want to take a drive out there and just hang maybe like just hang out and shoot some videos out there with you or something dude we got a guest room uh i got dogs that need petting like, <laughs> <Same here. laughs> yeah, whether man. i go there or you come out this way i'm totally down to go to vegas i've never been before oh well then it's a destination oh, yeah. uh -oh. dude uh -oh. patrick uh -oh. this is uh -oh. it boys we all just like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Patrick, dude. I was legit gonna come visit you this summer, dude. Like, so my father-in-law, as you know, as I've told you, he lives in Texas, mm -hmm. and you're like 300, 400 miles away or so from him. So I was, I figured, oh, I'll, I'll catch a train or something, and I'll get a hotel. Patrick and I'll hang out for the day, grab a bite to eat, get a beer or whatever, and then I'll just take the train the next day and just head back to his house where I'll be staying. We were gonna like knock them all out of the park. Everything ruined, dude. I was ready to buy it. plane tickets to go see my father-in-law. We we're gonna bring the kids. It was all lined up, dude. And then all the shit went down. And I'm like, I can't see my father in law, and I can't come see my friend Patrick. You got those two mixed up, though. I can't see Patrick. Can't see my father in law. <laughs> <laughs> dude, it's like that's yeah. crazy what the Thank world you. is right now. And it's like my anxiety can't can't take this shit anymore. Ooh, are we gonna do a live What's unboxing, that? Josh? Oh, oh real quick. Video? Also, Dave Dixon says shirts looking good, Patrick. Oh, thanks. Dave thanks. Dixon designed that. It's I'm backwards. Gonna a, I'm gonna do a oh. <laughs> I'm gonna do a quick merch plug for the base channel. Let's go, let's see it. Do you want to look this good? Well, maybe you should go to what's the link? Shit. I don't know. It's, it's Teespring. <laughs> you go to the merch link on the YouTube the, channel. Yeah, the, the link is channel. in the description below. Yo, straight up, I got the soft. I think it's the soft tee, the super soft tee or whatever. Oh, the comfort that tee. That one, dude. It, yeah. And it's long too, which I really appreciate. I, I got the same one. I hate when you have a shirt and you're like, all right, if I dry it, please don't shrink. All the way. <laughs> it shrank it shrank where I wanted it to shrink. And then it was still long. And I was like, thank Christ. The problem that I've always had with shirts is that I am always in between sizes. Same. So it's like, if I get one size, it's too small or I get the one that's too big. And I just, you know, go get the one that's too big. And it's just like, fuck, it's too big. And so I just look silly and, like this one is like a little bit yeah. too big, but I kind of make it work. But unless you're dark glass and you got fucking European size. Oh, dude, that fucks with me every year. Fits on my leg, dude. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I, I okay. I made the mistake of buying. I, I bought a Carhartt T-shirt recently, right? Because they're awesome. But I made the mistake of buying my actual T-shirt size. I bought a double X, and it's yellow. It is so big. My, I came out of my room putting it on, and my daughter goes, "Daddy, look, you're a banana." <laughs> Uh, oh, it's the banana uh, shirt. So whenever I wear the shirt, she calls me the banana man, which is what my wife calls me. So it's all perfect circle. Just give Josh, what are we? Uh... Josh, you almost there? I'm trying, man. It's almost there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm, sit help. I'm so stoked at the prospect of being able to use hashtag unboxing in the title of this video now. That we're Ooh. <laughs> click, 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 click. I need to do unboxing videos more often. Oh, damn. Those look nice. Oh, shit. Those oh, you got the open back ones? Damn, dude. They're not They're not open back. It's just a... Or it's glass, right? It's Yeah, or plastic or plastic plexi material. or something. What brand are those? I don't know if I say it right. It's Schaller. Schaller is what yeah, I, Schaller? I think it's Schaller. Called. No, chalet, oh, chalet, <laughs> chalet, home. Yeah, uh, chalet, is it? <laughs> what are yeah, these on? are called the Da Vinci's, and these are going on my new Harley Benton. So that's yeah, another. Was, yeah, that's yeah, another thing ahead, we're working on. We're doing a uh, modding the hell out of Josh's new Harley Benton video. Dude, hell yes, man. So oh, the I want to get some Seymour Duncans. Yeah. I want to get new tuners. I want to put a Babix. Did I say that right? Mm. Bridge. Yep. Yeah, yep. buddy. Yeah. I was saying Babcock Bridge. Can't wait for <laughs> Babcock. it. Babcock. <laughs> Babow. But uh, yeah, because I know I never had a base to actually do shit like that. You know, it's just kind of like oh, I like how it is. I don't want to mess with it. So now this is totally one hundred eighteen dollars base. Screw it up. Who cares? Dude, hell yes. <laughs> like, I love doing base. that. $120 tuners. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dude, these are $123 for these five. Holy this shit. This base was 118 So, yeah. Dude, we could, like, we could maybe turn that into like a ship of Theseus thing with the base. 
you just you know remove one oh, part or funny. replace one part at a time <laughs> like at what is it point really the same base yeah <laughs> that's funny that's good. i mean it's as long as the wood is good you can do anything else after that and just improve upon it but what if you like what you know what said? if after you do all the hardware what if you replace the neck you know and then and then after a little while you replace the body and then it's like at what point is it no longer the same base and then you build, a, you build a, a new a base out of those though. old parts. And then yes. is that is that now a new base or is that the old base? <laughs> you know what I mean? Damn. It's coming in a nice box. Everything the base of Theseus. Box. Where's the Anyways. soul of the base, though, if you replace everything? It's right here, dude. Where do you put the soul? Put it in your right. chest. <laughs> yeah. I have to pee, you guys. Give me a second. Me too. <laughs> hey, well, should we <laughs> call this? It's about an hour yeah. and a half long. I gotta 90 go minutes, not bad. All right, not bad, not bad. <laughs> Once again, Patrick, right, dude, thank you so much, man, for for joining us, bro. It's so I love good to you talk guys to so much. Love you too, man. Love you, dude. I miss you. Oh. And to everybody watching, hope y'all are staying safe. Uh, I hope everyone's okay. Practice, practice, practice. I'm gonna try and do what Josh said and just like use my fingers or something. I guess stretch. It's in the for it's in the forearm, man. You gotta stretch the forearm. So yeah. I play bass like like that. <laughs> Is that how I do it? Like a swimmer. Uh, just like hardcore swimming, dancing. Just, hardcore dancing, dude. <laughs> oh, dude. I'm seriously, like, the first show I go to when all this shit's over, like, whatever the, f like, whenever all this is done or whatever, I, I legit am going to cry. Like, I didn't get, like, oh, wait, missing out on Thundercat because of this, missing out on Coheed on my brother's birthday because of this, I miss missing out on Circa Survive. And Polyphia because it's Circus Survive playing the 10 year anniversary of my favorite album from them. And like, but it's just like, of course, we want to be see... safe and not be dumb. But yeah. yeah, I had tickets to see Bad, Bad, Not Good in LA one night only, and that shit got canceled. Oh, that hurts no nights soul, only. Dude. <laughs> yeah, your Bad, Bad, Not Good was like right after my Thundercat. And I dude. had that, yeah, I had to get rid of those tickets. Tragic. Oh. Mad Lib and Freddie Gibbs, too, all in one show. Like, ugh. that hurts ah. my soul. <laughs> Y'all making me sad, damn it. I gotta go. <laughs> All right, well, that is it. We will see you guys in maybe about two weeks. Patrick, if you ever want to join us again, please just let me know. And you are obviously definitely more than welcome. No, oh, I miss you guys so much. I miss you too, bro. You go too, subscribe man. to his channel if you're not already subscribed. Patrick oh, yeah, Hunter, do that thing. YouTube.com slash Patrick Hunter, right? Perfect. Easy. All right, we will see you guys in approximately two weeks. Uh, be safe and uh, yeah. Bye -bye. Yeah. I'm not good at goodbyes. Huh? <laughs> no, you hang up first. <laughs> no, you hang up first. Hang up first. And, <laughs> and. <laughs> that was fun, guys. Okay, cool. So we are right. we are out. <laughs>